Great, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you to Marco and the rest of the State of the Map team for inviting me. Uh, unfortunately, I was caught up in the travel chaos at London Gatwick on Friday. Um, uh, but nevertheless, despite that, I'm despite not being uh, there in person, I'm very excited to present our work uh, to you. Um, so hopefully you can all see this. Please do signal if there's any issues in connectivity. Okay, so uh, I'm going to present to you the Redeemer project. Um, this is uh, the name given to the Natural Resource Mapping Project uh, at the University of Southampton. Uh, it's run by the Geodata Institute at the University of Southampton uh, and has been developed in close collaboration with uh, the In International Institute for Environment and Development, uh, IIED. Uh, through project activities with DFID, uh, UK Aid, uh, and IUCN funding support in Tanzania, Kenya, Mali, and Senegal. Uh, the project started in 2013 uh, and is an open mapping framework to support sustainable development action. Uh, it is targeted at community-based participatory mapping of natural resources. Um, IIED have actually been instrumental in the growth of the project to date uh, by recognising that a platform that can map the often invisible nature, if you like, of natural resources, this aligns very closely with the devolved county planning processes. Uh, and I'm going to go on to talk about this in the next couple of slides. Um, I personally have been involved with the project for about 12 months now, uh, and I've recently returned from helping to run a training exercise in Kenya and uh, an extension to the BRACE program, which is building resilience and adaptation to climate extremes and disasters. Um, here we have been training local government staff to become trainers themselves uh, and to convey the mapping process uh, to the pastoral communities themselves. So my presentation is going to focus primarily on Kenya uh, purely because this is the current area of focus for the project, uh, but is very relevant in terms of decision-making and policy. So, aims of the project from a broad level um, are to develop an open tool for sub-national county-level uh, adaptation plan. Um, and it's specifically targeted at uh, vulnerable communities uh, who are often marginalised uh, and, and misrepresented. And it's really about integrating the adaptive practice of these communities into planning. For the tool itself, um, it's about capturing local knowledge from communities whose livelihoods depend on natural resources. And it really depicting the spatial and temporal variation in pastoral mobility, which understandably is as, as fluid as it gets. Uh, and obviously, uh, in the context of climate change, to be flexible enough to evolve and adapt to the changing climate. So what are these the kind of national initiatives that we're talking about here? Well, uh, for Kenya specifically, um, we're talking about two things. The County Integrated Development Plan, CIDP, uh, and the County Spatial Plan, CSP. And the extendable model of OpenStreetMap is a really is a really good fit uh, for our project in this context. And these two uh, plans, if you like, are very advanced for Sub-Saharan Africa uh, anywhere, really, because they specifically uh, state that GIS and spatial uh, spatial database, if you like, must be an uh, uh, an, an inherent part of the system. Uh, and the, right at the bottom there, the CSP, County Spatial Plan, must provide a spatial depiction of the social and economic development program of the county. Uh, and these, these really, as I said, this is recognition by the government that the spatial characteristics of natural resources are fundamental to Kenya's future vision. Um, and so, for instance, in the case of marginalised rural communities, Things like land ownership and rights information are not are historically not recorded, and therefore land registration is not is far from a formal process. It's anything but that. So, whilst 
if the government know that these problems exist, they don't know where they exist and they can't uh, remediate the problems because they can't, they don't know where to act. So an, an ultimate goal of what we're doing is to try and formalize the way in which all of this hidden knowledge can be captured and help and used to help drive policy. So areas uh, covered so far. Uh, so since 2013, the Dima project hasn't been actually hasn't actually been funded directly, but it's been built up from a series of individual research projects, uh, and it's grown into like a natural resource platform. Uh, and the focus is on the arid and semi-arid land areas, the ASALs. And so it's because of the outputs of these projects, instead of three or four separate map web mapping and portals, it made sense to bring them all into a single database system. So Senegal, Mali, Kenya and Tanzania have been these focal areas. Uh, so I'm going to look at Kenya to show how the standard, we've extended the standard open street map model. And this is what it looks like. This is a picture from last week, uh, the current community mapping exercise in Wajir County, north of Kenya. Uh, and the people standing at the front, the government officials, uh, were trained by me a month ago over, uh, over in Nairobi. And this is what it starts. This is how it starts. This is about paper maps on the wall and starting to understand the cognitive picture, if you like, of uh, pastoralist communities. The, the areas on the land, on the ground that are important to them uh, and what needs to, what is important for their livelihoods. So we use uh, Drossum, the Java OpenStreetMap editor, um, and we then, using uh, offline satellite imagery, uh, we then go in and uh, draw and tag the data uh, in the normal way. Um, and we've developed a custom preset tagging structure uh, for use in Drossum. Uh, and obviously, the offline capabilities of JOSM uh, are pretty important when you can you must you can consider that uh, data connectivity uh, connectivity is not in abundance in rural parts of Africa. So once at the end of a workshop, data is then uploaded to server infrastructure, which is hosted at the University of Southampton, uh, and I'm the server administrator for for this system. So how are we actually extending the OpenStreetMap data model? Well, to look at the availability of water, this is a really good example, really. So hopefully you can see this OK. Um, I'm showing here broad pasture areas in an area in Isiolo County in Kenya. Uh, and the sort of broad pasture areas are depicted by different shades of green, uh, depending on their attributes. Um, rivers are shown. Uh, both permanent rivers and also seasonal ones, so ephemeral rivers uh, <coughs> are only, uh, uh, only flow for certain parts of the year. But as we zoom in, um, additional contextual information is shown, like uh, competing wildlife migration routes. They're obviously like the elephant corridor on the left here. That's, uh, they're obviously competing for the same water resources. Um, the, there is a drought refuge inside here. I don't know if it's visible in the sort of brown uh, polygon area. Um, and additionally, there's also a swamp uh, called a chaffa in Swahili. And these areas obviously overlap. Um, and that wouldn't normally be immediately obvious uh, to, you know, somebody mapping these areas without the local knowledge. And obviously, we've also got the additional water uh, features on here as water well, depicted as points. So water pans, water tanks, uh, boreholes, uh, ordinary wells, that type of thing. And if we look at um, uh, one a specific water point here, a uh, well, this one of the key things that we need to capture for a pastoralist is uh, what, what does a good water point actually mean? Well, that means one thing from a human consumption perspective. Uh, because of obviously drinkable water, but something completely different in terms of pastoralism, because uh, the quality of the water is perhaps not so important to pastoralists, but the reliability of the, of the water pump is. 
uh, because unreliable water simply uh, translated to livestock mortality. Um, and consequently, there's a maximum radius away from a water pump that must be considered if you're going to minimize this, this mortality. Um, and, and actually, uh, there are huge variations in water pump design, manufacture, and the availability of spare parts. This, this really is a, a varying picture across uh, in rural Africa. And this makes remedial action really difficult um, because if you don't know the, the specific type of pump you're dealing with, if it's broken, it's very difficult to, to, to fix. Um, but as we sort of capture this varying reliability, and on the left, you can see uh, reliability dry season uh, is poor for this particular one. Um, we can start to see that, you know, we can highlight these as, as should be addressed. And really, many of them are classed as good. And the ones that we've mapped, they are classed as good. But the key thing here is reliability over time. Uh, and, uh, you know, and as this framework matures, uh, the reliability over many years can be captured and analyzed uh, through change sets analysis. And looking at more granularity, um, with grass types alone can capture many hidden attributes. And here are some of the less obvious. Um, so we've got pasture designation, uh, so dry season graze versus year round, uh, pasture salt source, uh, grassland type, herbaceous versus shrubby savanna, uh, this type of thing. Uh, leaf type, leaf cycle, leaf cycle is, is really important. Um, Grass types that are beneficial to sheep, they thrive under certain soil conditions, but the nutritional value of a particular grass varies immensely during its growth cycle. Uh, so variation, which is made really much more complex if you have if you if the grass is subjected to abnormal weather patterns. Um, so certain grass types can be damaging to the health of the sheep at the early stages of the plant, plant's growth cycle. And so if that growth cycle isn't consistent year upon year uh, is soon uh, a recipe for problem um, and this is because at the early stages of the growth cycle the plants natural defense mechanisms are most uh, in most in abundance um, conditions of access uh, as we've seen ownership and, and rights information are key um, especially where this is linked to the sustainability of the pastoralist livelihood sector um, so where the role of flexible livelihoods and resource of variability really is seen as an advantage. Um, with, as, as it is with water availability, local negotiation takes place here between pastoralists, so reciprocity, and that's captured uh, as an attribute. Um, but this, that sort of ownership and rights does raise a key question, if you like, um, how, uh, how open and raises a question on as to the openness of the data. It should ownership and access information be available online for free. Maybe there are levels of, of accessibility to this information. Uh, protected areas, uh, obviously uh, understandable. Uh, conflict, conflict issues can arise over the availability of resources, uh, as one might uh, imagine. Access to water uh, or areas designated as pasture. And, and the sort of lack of formal delineation and the first boundaries for pasture land leads to this situation of conflict. And this is, is something that we capture. Um, sometimes it's unknown, but it's, even if it is unknown, it's, it's now there for, for further investigation. So, um, challenges uh, that we're looking at. Who can and should be able to edit data like this? Is it, is it right that somebody on the other side of the world edits a pasture area when they have no real knowledge of the nutritional variants of the grass? Um, it's, it's a big question. Um, how open is the data? Can it be used by others for, for analysis? Well, yes, it can. Um, adaptation measures. Uh, how can we capture these in the mapping framework? Well, as we've seen, reciprocity is an attribute clearly one, um, and that's a way that this will adapt locally to what's going on. Um, but it's also closely linked to frequency of updates. So if, you're, if you have a, 
very frequently updated map um, with features. You're starting to see changes in polygons uh, in terms of what they represent, uh, changes in drought refuge areas, this type of thing. Uh, this can be understood over through time series analysis. Uh, <clears throat> gaps in the data. Um, do the gaps in the data, do they represent features that are missing from the map? Or are there genuinely no features at that location? Um, that's a really difficult one. Um, and uh, really, one, it really, it's something that only the maturity of the platform and community engagement can really address. Um, but the sort of the final one is is engaging the local communities to own the mapping process, and and this really kind of links together the uh, the, the three points above. Uh, in every way. And so the process that we've been going through, training the trainers, if you like, so we've been training the, the government staff to then go out and train the, the pastoral communities. It has to be done in, in the local local uh, language with the local uh, customs and the local way that things are carried out. This is the first step in the process. And this kind of engagement process can take Quite a few uh, attempts before you end up with an acceptable level of data quality. And this has been the case uh, uh, in Isiolo County in Kenya. Uh, in terms of uh, kind of progress for sub Saharan Africa, it's very much a patchwork quilt, um, but this is really understandable. Uh, and it's really no different to the variation in sort of progress that. UK local authorities have um, with tasks, mapping tasks that are much more sim much simpler, more straightforward than natural resources. So, to sort of summarise and bring it together, um, there's definitely a growing need to capture the less visible attributes of natural resources in, across the ASAP. That's, that's without question uh, the case at the moment. Um, and Importantly, at a very high level, it, it is recognised that the value of accurate max data exists, and this is really a key element of future plans. <clears throat> and challenges exist as well, um, but like with any crowdsourcing project, uh, uptake and momentum are key, and the need for pastoralists to get mapping has, has really never been greater. So, sort of bringing all of the above together. Challenges, kind of balancing the depth of granularity we need to go to, and also the temporal resolution of data versus the effectiveness of the top down decision making. And the, as we've seen with Isiolo in Kenya, the solution is devolved authority for managing decision making. At the high level, it, you know, information or the key uh, granularity of the data tends to get lost. Um, we are, as I said, working government officials in Wajir now to achieve the same goal. Uh, and on that note, uh, thank you for listening. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Yes, I can. Yeah, absolutely. Are there any questions um, from the audience? Yes, I can just see you. Yes, hello. <laughs> oh, now for the recording. My, my question would be, I uh, noted that you have used the tag reliability dry reason, which I haven't yes. known before. And um, my experience, uh, my uh, question always is, is uh, are, are hot people and people from um, the um, uh, humanitarian um, yeah. missions, um, are, are, I assume they are, you are using the usual tags. And, 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 and else it should be justified to use a non-usual tag. Is, is this a usual tag, the one I mentioned? Uh, reliability dry season is, is an example of the one, uh, one of the ones that we've extended. Uh, I don't think it exists, it exists in the normal, uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think it exists in the normal framework. I think that's one that we've added in. Uh, I 
I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's one that we've developed. I, I mean, it's okay because OBCBAM is inclusive, but uh, is it yeah. documented so, somewhere, uh, somewhere as, a, as, a, as a tag and what it means? Yes, yes it is, um, absolutely. So we, we've developed a parallel wiki um, with explaining all of the tagging structure alongside, uh, alongside the project as well. Um, okay. So it is all available, and I'd certainly happy to uh, divulge any of that to, to, to anyone that wants to see it, yeah. Yeah, thank you. No problem.